Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to a new video. So I am at the end of my food week, let's say this way. So I'm gonna go back home on the Monday and I will be back in my studio where I will have my full hardware. So again, this is gonna be the last video with this audio quality. Thanks for the feedback. I'm glad that uh, it's not that bad for you guys. And so in this video, I'm going to have a look at the Solus Linux distribution. So a few days ago, Solus came out with version 4.3 and it offers a lot of improvements, especially the new kernel 5.13, which enables support for new hardwares like the new AMD Radeon cards. So as you probably already know, Solus is using the budget desktop environment as a default. There are also other flavors like Plasma, Mate and also Gnome, but I'm going to have a look at the Pudgy version in this video because it's a flagship and it's also one of my favorite desktop environments as well because it's fairly light and also fairly minimalistic. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So here I am on the desktop of Solus 4.3. This is a live ISO and we are going to install the system right now. But before I do so, let me just spend a few words about the Budgie desktop, which is the default desktop for Solus. But before we get to the installation, let me open up shortly here the browser. So let me type in here Solus Linux, because I don't remember the website. And let's go here, getsol.us or get Solus. So let's go here to download because Solus actually comes in several flavors. So the default flavor is the one we have here on the live ISO, which is Solus Budgie. So Budgie is actually the default desktop environment for Solus. Budgie, as you probably already know, is a desktop environment that uses the GNOME technologies such as GTK, for example, and it is developed by Solus. So it's the default desktop environment here in Solus. Now we have also the GNOME edition, we have also the Mate edition. This will be surely good if you have an older machine. And we have also the Solus Plasma, which is offering the KDE desktop environment. So Solus 4.3 came out just like five days ago and it offers tons of improvements. Now let's go shortly here on the top of the site and let's go to the blog because we have here the Solus 4.3 released, which was released as you can see on July 11. Now let's click here on the link and we can have a look here at uh, what is new in this release. So we have here the default applications. These are Firefox, LibreOffice and Thunderbird. We will see this after the installation. We have the flavors as we just saw, and we have also some new drivers for newer hardware like the AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT, 6800, 6800 XT and 6900 XT cards and many others. We have also here some multimedia upgrades, as you can see, we have some new decoders available. We have also encoding support for monochrome AV1. And we have also here the improvements for each flavor. So for example, on Budgie, you can see we have fixes, for example, for drop use of Q and cancelable in Raven's notification view. We have application icon not scaling correctly. We have issue with ritual box icon not being displayed in the icon task list applet and fixed regression in budget desktop settings icon handling. So we have tons of improvements here for the budget desktop environment. And the same thing goes also for the GNOME and the other desktop environments as well. So if you want to use a certain desktop environment with Solus, I recommend you to go through the list here and see what's new if you are curious about what has been improved in every flavor of Solus 4.3. Now let's close up here Firefox here and start our installation. So let's double click here, install OS. And from the installer here, let's select the language. So I'm gonna go for English and I'm gonna say here, find my location automatically. And that's because I have also already internet connected. If you don't, you can go down here at the bottom and select your Wi-Fi if you have a Wi-Fi connection. And then I can click next. Now it find my location right now, it detects that I am in Italy because I'm still here in this country house. And by default, it's gonna tell me that I have an Italian keyboard, which is not the case. So I will scroll down here to find my keyboard, which should be down here. And this is the one, and then I can click next. Now my location here, it's selecting Rome because I'm in Italy, but I am not actually in Rome, but I will leave it there as it is nevertheless. And now where should we install the distribution? Well, we have only one disk in this machine, so I'm just gonna leave this there. 
and now we can choose automatically partition this empty disk or assign mount points to partitions. Now you have to be careful here. If you select the second option here, as you can read here, assign mount points to partitions you have previously created. These must already exist prior to launching the installer. If you modify them, please restart the installer. That means if you want to partition your disk manually to have, for example, a home partition, which will not be created if you go with automatical, you will have to go here into the system tools and select Gparted and then partition your disk with Gparted as you normally would if you want to have multiple partitions. Now it's important to do this before of course you run the installer as it says there. In my case though I'm going to go with automatical and then click next. I don't need to use LVM in this case but you have the option to use it and also to encrypt the new installation if you choose to do so. And now we need to give the name for the host name here. So I'm just going to call this computer Solus. And as you can see, because it detects I have a UFI machine, it tells me create a new ESP or EFI system partition on the disk, which is fine with me. And the bootloader installation is mandatory with UFI. So I'm going to click next. And now I can create my username and the real name and I'm going to give a password to this user and repeat it and this user should be administrator, that's fine and then here we have to click add now so now we have one user available in the system if you want to have more users you can just click the plus sign here and create more users we can click next and here we have basically a summary of what is going to happen on our machine so we can click install and click ok so this is going to take a couple of minutes to install. So I'm just going to pause the video here, guys, and I'll be back with you once it's finished. So the installation is finished and I rebooted the machine. And as you can see, we are greeted by the Light DM Display Manager with the Slick Reader. So this is the same reader we find in Linux Mint. So let me log in here into the machine. And we're going to be greeted again by our Budgie desktop environment. There you go. You can see already we have some updates available, but we're going to take care of these in a second. Now, the first thing I want to do, I want to pull up the terminal. I want to show you something here. So let me increase the size and type in uname dash R. And as you can see here, Solus is using the 5.13 kernel, which is fairly new. And that's why we have also support for newer hardware, like I said before, for the new Radeon cards, for example, but also many more devices, like for example, Microsoft network devices. We have also some supplemental Microsoft Surface support and many others. So it's definitely a great kernel and it's great to have it here on Solus. It's gonna support the latest hardware. Now, if I type in LSBK, you will see here, it created basically three partitions. So we have our EFI partition, we have a swap partition, which is four gigabytes and we have the root partition. As I said, if you wanna have a home partition, you will have to partition the disk manually. Now let's type in free-h to check the resources. So you can see Solos is actually using not much memory here. We are using right now 592 megabytes on a total of eight gigabytes of RAM, which is actually not bad. So as I said before, Budgie uses actually some GNOME technologies like GTK and also some of the applications we find here in Budgie are GNOME applications, like for example, the terminal. If we go here into about, you will see we have here the GNOME terminal and we have also some other GNOME applications here. Now let me close the terminal here for a moment and let's see what Solus comes pre-installed with. Now let's see under the utilities here, we have some utilities for our system. We have the terminal, we have also some applications for passwords and key managements and the calculator and disks. We have here one application for universal access and we have our system tools. So the budget desktop settings, we're gonna look at this in a second. This is basically for the budget customization. We have then our system settings, which we can also access by right clicking on the desktop and clicking system settings here. This is basically the GNOME settings. And as you can see here under about, we have here the Solus logo. We have here the processor and also the disk. We have here the OS name, the OS type, and also the GNOME version, which is GNOME 40.2. So this is the latest version of GNOME. We have also XORG and that's because Solus actually does not support Wayland right now. And we can check also for software updates from here. Now closing this up, we can go back here to sound and video. We have here the GNOME MPV, which is used to play videos and also Rhythmbox. 
We have some other applications here for the settings and print settings. And we have also Office, which is already pre-installed. We have here LibreOffice pre-installed in Solus. For the internet applications, we have Firefox and Thunderbird and HexChat here. And for graphics, we have Image Viewer and LibreOffice Draw. And then we have our accessories. We have Files, which is the file browser for GNOME and the text editor. So let's go back here to System Tools and click Budgie Desktop Settings, which you can actually also open by right-clicking on the desktop and clicking Budgie Desktop Settings here. And here you can basically change the style or the look and feel of your Budgie desktop. So you can change, for example, the widgets. Right now we have Plata Noir, but we can change also to other ones which are already pre-installed. These are going to change the look and feel of the windows. We have icons here that we can change as well. We have cursors and also the notification position, which is right now top right, right here. And right now it's using also the dark theme and it's using also animations, which you can switch off by disabling this option here. We have also some options for the desktop, as you can see here for fonts for Raven, which is the panel appearing here on the right side of the display, which is offering you the applets and the notifications. And we have also some options for the windows here that we can change, for example, disabling nightlight mode or disabling automatic tiling if you don't want to have that. We have also the settings for the panel, which is here on the bottom. And we can also create multiple panels if you want to do this. On the panels, we can change the applets, which are the ones we have here on the left side and also here on the right side. And we have also the settings for our panel if you want to have it in another position and changing also the size. So this is a very quick tour of the budget desktop. It's fairly light and it's fairly simple. It has also a very minimalistic look, which I actually like. And this comes also with the software center already pre-installed, which is here. So we can open this up. And as you can see here, it's really checking for updates and we're gonna do this in a second. But right now we can see the categories of the software. Now we can scroll this and let's go, for example, to budget desktop here. We can see some of the things that we can install or might already have been installed. And under updates here, we can see already updates for our system. So if we open this arrow here, we can see what we can update in our system right now. So under installed, we see, of course, the packages that are installed. And under third party, we have the most common software. So you can see here we have, for example, Google Chrome, if you want to use that. We have the beta version of Google Chrome. We have also the dev version and we have also other applications like MoneyDance if you want to have the personal finance manager. We have also the Plex Media Server here. We have Skype and we have also Spotify and TeamViewer and also Viber if you want to install them. So these are the most popular third-party software that you can find here under the third-party category. We can also search. For example, let me search here for OBS and hit enter. And as you can see, we have a lot of hits here. So let me type in Dash Studio just to search for that package. And you can see it comes up immediately. We have OBS Studio 2701. And we can also go to the settings here where we can also tell Solos to check automatically for updates. Now we can update the system from here if you want to do that. We just have to click Update Selected. Or another way is to go to the terminal. So let's open up the terminal here. And let me again increase the font size and let's type in sudo. Now the package manager for Solos is eopkg and then the command is upgrade and then hit enter. Now we need to authenticate here and as you will see here it's now checking for updates and it's already installing. So this is another way on how you can upgrade your packages in Solos but for most people who don't want to go into the terminal the software center is definitely the easiest way. Now, while it's updating here, let me right click on the desktop and go to system settings. Now, there is one thing which is curious because we have a lot of settings here and we have also some settings in the budget desktop setting application, but we don't have any way here in this installation to change the look and feel of our display manager, which is the LightDM Slick Reader. So to do that, we will have to actually install another package in our system. So let's close the settings here. And as you can see here, it's still installing the packages. You can see here, it's also updating the kernel. So let's close this up and let's go to the software center. Now, to be able to configure your display manager in Solos, you will need to install another package. So let's go to search. And the package is called LightDM 
dash settings. And as you can see, it comes right up, a configuration tool for the Lightium Display Manager. So we can basically click here and click install. And we have some dependencies here, so we can click install. And we need to authenticate. And it's gonna take a moment here to install. These are not big packages and it's already done. So now if we go here to our menu and search for login window, you can see it appears on the top. And we need to authenticate once here. And now we can also customize our display manager. So I don't know why it doesn't come pre-installed because I think it's an important aspect of the configuration if you want to personalize your display manager here. Especially if you have a high DPI display, it's important that you go under settings here and that you can enable this because sometimes it works out of the box, but sometimes not. So it's important to have this package, I think, installed in the distribution. Now, if you want to install certain applications that you don't find in the software center, you might find them as a flat pack. Now, Flatpak support is integrated in Solus, but the repository for Flathub is not yet available. So what you can do, you can open up Firefox and type in here Solus Flathub and hit enter. And let me accept this. And you can see here the first link, Solus Quick Setup. So we can open this up and we need to make sure that we have the both packages installed. So Flatpak is actually already installed, but you can copy this command here and open up the terminal. And let me increase the font size here and we can paste that in and hit enter and authenticate. And it's gonna install the GTK portal package because that was not installed. And now we can copy also the remote here, the repository for Flathub. And we can close Firefox. And we can paste this in and then hit enter. And I forgot actually to give this sudo privileges, so sudo. And now the repository is installed. So right now we can install something like, for example, let's say we want to install Kden Live. So we can type in flatpak install Kden Live and hit enter. And you can see it's now looking for matches in the Flathub repository, which is fine. We can now accept the defaults here and we can install Kden Live as a Flatpak and many other Flatpaks that you can find on Flathub. So I'm gonna type in N here. I don't want to install this right now. And now if you want, you can use also many other applications as Flatpaks in your Solus distribution. Now, in terms of usage, I have to say, I really enjoy using the Solus distribution. It feels very snappy and it feels also very minimalistic, which I like a lot. And it's also fairly light on resources. As you've seen before, let me close here Firefox because it's always using up a little bit of memory and, and open up the terminal here. Again, go increase the font size, free dash H. And you can see it's using about 600 megabytes of RAM, which is again, not bad for a desktop environment. Of course, it's not gonna be as light as a window manager, but for a desktop environment, it's absolutely okay. And as I was saying, I really enjoy using Budgie and I enjoy also using Solus. It offers really the minimalistic look and the minimalistic installation because you don't have that many programs installed here. And by offering the latest kernel, you can be sure that it will work also on newest hardware. Now I'm looking forward also to have on Arch Linux the kernel 5.13 because it's not yet available, it's still in testing, but it should be coming to the main repositories fairly soon. So this was an overview of Solus 4.3. All in all, I have to say I really like Solus 4.3. It's very minimalistic and it's fairly light in resources as you have seen in the video. And also being an independent distribution, it puts it in a fairly special spot because they are developing this independently and they don't depend from another distribution. It makes Solus kind of a niche. But from the functional standpoint, I really like how it's built. And because of the batch desktop environment, the experience is also really nice if you like the desktop environment, of course. Who knows, maybe in the future Solus will offer also a window manager alternative that will be fantastic. Again, if you're using Solus, let me know in the comments below why you like it. And I also hope that you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and sub to the channel if you haven't already. That always helped me out. And if you want to support my work, you can become a Patreon. Or if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you very soon in the next one.